Okay, I'm going to cover both Windows 10 and Windows 11, uh, but first Windows 10. And to invoke it from the notifications down here, you're probably going to have the snipping tool here. You simply click on it, it brings up the snipping tool, and you can start from there. But you don't have to rely upon it to be uh, on your notification area. Simply go to the Windows uh, Settings app. And once you're there, search for print, and you'll see the ability to set your print key to go ahead and invoke snipping. And once you have that set, it'll just pop up the uh, snipping tool anytime you hit the print screen key. So I guess the first thing you should know is that let's say you hit print screen by accident, you need to know how to cancel. Now there's that little X up there, just hit that and you're back to normal operation. So if you're not much of a mouse person and you want to use some shortcut keys, you can actually invoke those. You have to learn them, but you hit the alternate key and you'll see that will pop up here. And you'll be able to see which ones do what. So all you have to do is press that Alt key and that letter and you'll invoke that particular function. I prefer the mouse, but you can use the uh, keystroke along with any function, switch between them, do whatever you want uh, to switch between a different thing you want to do. Uh, in the app. So now that we have that, let's go and look at some of the different kinds of things, the uh, different kind of methods of uh, snipping. You'll see when you hit it, there's a little list up top. And the first one over here is a rectangular snip. And you simply click that and choose the uh, screen size you want. Come over here and you'll see it in your buffer. You know, click on it and you can start editing that particular clip. But let's say you don't want to grab the entire screen, you just want a piece. As a matter of fact, you don't even care about a rectangle. You want to just grab a certain area. Well, that's what the irregular shape is about. You just go here and you'll see it starts highlighting uh, the area you want to record. You can reverse back on it, whatever you need to do, and come back around and grab that guy and do the snip. Um, and then all you do then is look at your clipboard again. And sure enough, uh, there it is. There's the one we're going to edit. And once you save this or copy it into your buffer, uh, you can use it elsewhere. Now, of course, the one that's most commonly used is though you're just going to grab the full screen. You may put it into a different editor later on to do something with it, but you're going to grab your entire screen. So you just simply you hit the print screen button and you'll get the uh, full screen. But if you have dual monitors, that particular function will capture both your monitors. If we look here, at the capture, sure enough, it got both sides of my screens, uh, my left monitor and my right monitor together. But what if I don't want to have both monitors? I just want to have my main monitor, in this case, the one on the right. Well, that's what the purpose of the default setting is. When you go ahead and have your screen up and you hit the print screen button, you'll see that the one that's highlighted uh, is the one for a single screen. So now when we capture it, uh, we get just that single screen that uh, you're working on. Now, one little nuance here. Let's say you have like your taskbar and where I've set it up like that. But you want to capture it because it's got the date on it or some other thing you want to do. Well, simply invoke it, but you can invoke it while hover down there and hit the print screen button. And you'll see that when we take a look at the snapshot, it'll have the uh, taskbar included uh, in the shot itself. And we can see that when we go here and uh, open it up and there's a taskbar included in the screenshot. So if you hide your taskbar to get clean ones, you can alternate and go ahead and get the taskbar too. But what if you don't want the entire window? You just want an app that's running. You want to capture that particular action. You notice that this is titled Window Snip. And if you click on the large screen, you'll get the entire screen. But let's cancel out of that. If you bring up an application, for example, this is a file uh, explorer, uh, and we do the same thing. We say window, and you click on it, and you hover until you find the border of the program, and it captures only that stuff within that particular program. When you click on it, you can see that you only got that window. Now, what about multiple windows? Here's two different uh, file explorers. I want to capture one or the other. If I sit there and use the same function, the window snip, hover there, I get that one. But if I hover on this one, I'll get that one. 
So you can choose which window, if you have multiple windows open, you can choose which window uh, you want to capture. Now there is a little bit of a caveat here, okay? If I have this one here and I want to capture this window, and I have it down here, but some of it is off screen, I'll drag it down here, and I go ahead and invoke the window snip. Okay, so come up here, uh, hit the print screen key, say windows, and capture that. Now watch what happens when I get here. When I go look at the capture, it only got the visible part of that application. Uh, and anything off screen is not captured. Okay, you've got your capture. Let's talk a little bit about the editing tools. The first thing we're going to talk about is these uh, drawing tools here. You have different types of pen types. You have different thicknesses for them. You simply click and drag and uh, create that particular highlight that you want. And by the way, if you made a mistake between clicks, okay, you can just hit the undo key and erase that particular one you just did. To show this in a little more detail, I have one here that I've done a bunch of them. And if I hit the undo key, each and every keystroke individually uh, is in your buffer. You just can undo it. And in case you're wondering how I had different colors, just simply come up here and click and choose both the thickness uh, and the color. You just drag here to change your thickness uh, and you get that particular thickness. Uh, you come up here and you select a different color and come down here and say, I want that thicker. And I get one like that. And while we're on that subject, well, you can choose different things up here, uh, different types. Uh, one's a ballpoint pen, one's a highlighter, uh, and do choose which one you want to use. And you just simply click between them in order to draw that particular type of uh, um, annotation that you want. In this case, we move from the ballpoint pen over to the pencil. Uh, that's one here. And it has a different uh, style to it, a different look to it. So we simply click on that and immediately choose our colors if we want, uh, thickness and all that, and draw that in there. Now, earlier I showed you how to use the undo key to undo some of the stuff. Okay. However, a little more sophisticated, if you create things, you can use the eraser tool. So let's uh, go ahead and put something there. Grab this over here, do that. Uh, grab this one and do that. Now that we have stuff like that, we want to take care of some of these that uh, we have here. We click on the eraser tool. What you need to do is erase all, and they're all gone. That's the first option. But if you're in the middle of editing, you have a whole bunch of drawings on here, but you want to get rid of a particular one, you simply click on the tool and then hover right over the line. You got to make sure you're on it. And then you click on it, and that last edit will disappear. So let's go ahead and uh, do that. We're going to click on this. We're going to come down here, click on this. Well, let's do the center one instead. Oh, that one's gone, or this one's gone, or that one's gone. Now, at first glance, the ruler function is not that handy. Okay, normally you're drawing, you try and draw a straight line, you can't do that. Uh, what the hell? So what you do is you click on here and you put the ruler up, and as long as you drag with a slightly downward pressure against the ruler, it will make sure that your line is straight. So uh, after you're done with that one, you can switch to one of the other ones if you want. And then you can actually just click on the ruler again, drag it someplace else, and continue your editing there with another straight line. Now that's great, but what if I don't want a straight line across the screen? Simply use your scroll button on your mouse and you'll change it to an angle or wherever you want. You can line it up wherever you want. Choose a different tool, same tool, whatever. Same color, different color. And do the same thing you did Whoop, and do that. So here I'm going to use the uh, undo key uh, just to uh, demonstrate uh, the, how you can do that. And then we're going to go ahead and draw the straight line. And by the way, you can switch to a protractor, which is really cool, because if you click here and say the protractor and you do this line, it will do an arc just as you want it. Of course, another big function is cropping. You could just click up here and you can say image crop, and you can select, uh, using the tools provided, a portion of the screen you want. And once you have it, uh, you can uh, zoom in, for example, to do some more stuff. Or you can just uh, change it again to a different, reposition it, all that. And when you're finally satisfied, uh, you can click on the accept check mark uh, near the top of the screen. And it'll apply that uh, particular cropping to your image. And uh, you can continue working from there.
so you're all ready to go ahead and use this. But uh, well, let's say you uh, need a little bit closer look. You can still use the uh, zooming tool right there. Uh, and then you can simply choose your function here. And you can copy it and then you can share it. So I'll go ahead and copy it to my buffer. And I'll open up a, a different program to uh, use it with. For example, here I am in Word. I created a new document. I just hit Control V to paste it. And sure enough, there it is in the document. Or here I am in Outlook, and I'm going to just paste it into the document uh, to send it. Just do a, a Control V to paste, select that, and there it is. And by the way, while I'm here, I can actually do some a little bit of resizing uh, within the uh, email itself. And nowadays, you might want to do a, a share of uh, text. You can just hit your sharing option, find your contacts here, decide how you want to share it, and boom, it'll be sent that way. Just to finish up a bit, there's a few little other functions available up there at the menu. You can open a file up and bring up a different file, open with a different application, uh, all the usual stuff you'll see uh, within Windows. And then we can come down here and you can print it, you know, do those kind of things. And lastly, you may want to go ahead and visit the settings page. So if we get out of this and we come up here and we go to settings, and you'll see here, there's the settings. And you'll see the different settings for the print screen shortcut and how it's used. This is a little bit of an oops. Uh, upon review, I realized I kept a couple of functions out. You can create a new SNP without leaving that particular one. You just simply say new, and it'll go ahead and do it. You do a new SNP of uh, whatever the full screen. And once you do that uh, and complete it, you'll see you still have the old one open. Now, another thing you can do uh, is do a delayed. So let's say you want to do something on the screen, uh, and but have it take a picture after you've done something. So if you clip here and you say the three second, and it'll take a picture automatically after whatever interval you selected. It's particularly useful if you want to have a mouse hovering over a certain area on the screen or something like that. Uh, so you'll see here from the menu, there's uh, different options for a different delay depending upon uh, what you want to do. If I clear this out and let's say I want to do another one new, I come up over here, there's either a three second or a 10 second interval. Okay, the last thing you want to do probably is after you've done all your work, done all the editing you want to do, is you may want to keep it for posterity or for whatever. Uh, you can do it after uh, the 10 second, uh, whatever. And the point of it is, is you're done. You just come over here to the save uh, that's a save as, and you can actually select where you're going to save it at, and then just go over here uh, to the directory that you want. Just find it by clicking that, it opens up an explorer window, and you navigate to wherever you want. Now that was Win 10. Win 11 is by and large the same as far as the functions. Uh, you still have to go here, and you can configure your print screen. You simply search for that function here, uh, and we type in. Uh, it's the settings app here I, I went into. And once there, uh, I select or search uh, for the print function here. Uh, and you'll see the same uh, basic one uh, listed. And we come over here under accessibility and keyboard. And then you come here and use it. And I have it turned on. While the functions are the same, the interface is a little different. You'll notice there's no three button. There's a drop down here and you select which one you want to use. You still have the uh, manual keys if you want to use the uh, Alt and keystroke in order to invoke a function. The delayed screen snipping is now also in the drop down. Uh, you come over here and uh, choose which one you want. And by the way, once you've made a capture and you're, you're, there's more uh, keystroke keys or shortcut keys here at the bottom of the screen for editing. And that's where your controls will move down to. And it includes all your editing, different types of editing, your rulers and all that, image cropping. Uh, they're all listed down there. Now, one of the nice things is you now have a video editing tool. You see you have camera here and the usual functions and all that. But now uh, we can go ahead and resize, do all those kind of things, say accept or cancel, whatever. Uh, but you can do a video. And uh, let's go ahead and look at that. I'm going to click on the video function. 
Now, one last thing is that when you do that, and it brings up the interface to uh, start it, you just can't click on start. You notice it's a little cross when you uh, are hovering somewhere else. Uh, that's because it's waiting for you to select an area of your screen. You can do the entire screen or part of it, adjust the size by using those cropping tools, and start recording everything that's happening on your screen. So now that I'm recording it, I'm bringing up Notepad, for example, and I'm going to uh, just uh, I'll put it over here and I'm just going to say type and stuff and do all that. And then I'm going to come up here and I'm going to say I can pause the recording, okay, or stop it. So I'm going to stop it. And sure enough, uh, there's the screen. I'm going to go ahead and uh, close uh, Notepad for a moment here. And you'll notice that down here there is a video bar that I can select any time I can review what I did. For example, you'll see Notepad come up here and you'll see why I resize it off screen so you can see my entire. Uh, surface of a notepad and do whatever I want to do so it's visible during this recording. And just a little cleanup to make sure I've covered all the functions in the video. Uh, you'll see that uh, you know different types of modes are here. Uh, you know different things to do are all still here in Windows 11. Hey if you found this video helpful don't forget to like the video. If you want more don't forget to subscribe. You can also follow me on Facebook and Twitter. The links are in the description of this video.